What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video. Now today, I don't know if I'm going to put the item in the thumbnail, but I, I don't even know if I'm going to put the item in the name. I might make it like a little clickbait video like, this item is going to change VGC forever. Uh, because it is. Okay, uh, here's the thing. I, I have made some metagame calls in the past that I am not proud of. Just kidding, I'm always right. But the point is, uh, there have been some uh metagame calls i've made that aren't entirely correct uh and that is just because it's it's speculation you know things change but this one thing i want to talk about today is something i am almost certain is going to pick up in usage at least a little bit okay let's talk about it let's let's just rip off the bandage we're talking about covert cloak now, don't leave just yet, but you'll, you'll understand in a minute. But before we get into this, if you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. And that's for my comment question of the day. What do you think about the Covert Cloak item, and do you think it's bad or is it good? Stick around to the end and hear me out. Also, if you guys want some bonus content, if you are a $5 and up Patreon, a subscriber to my Twitch channel, or a YouTube channel member, you get an extra video at the top of each week on Sunday. I just want to let you know it's a new thing I'm doing. So yeah, anyways, let's get into this video. Okay, so Covert Cloak, what does it do? The holder is not affected by the secondary effect of another Pokemon's attack. Now, that is a very broad and powerful explanation. So what exactly is the use case for this? Well, the main one I'm going to talk about is Garganical, but to just sort of get a general list of moves that you can actually be pretty safe from, let's just get like a, a Mew on here. Why not? We'll get a Mew on here. Uh, Fake Out will never flinch you. Rock Slide will never flinch you. Blizzard will never freeze you. Knock Off actually won't remove your item. I know that because Knock Off is sheer force boosted. You'll never get a special defense drop from Earth Power. These are all very cool things. Oh, another one. Snarl will never give you a special defense or special attack drop, and Icy Wind will never drop your speed. So it's sort of like okay. It's sort of like a clear amulet in a way. Clear amulet makes it so you never get stat drops. And most of the secondary effects of moves are stat drops. But in exchange for making you not immune to stuff like Intimidate and other moves that would just straight up lower your stats like growl or something this move or this item will actually just make you immune to a plethora of other things so let's get into the use cases that i'm going to talk about before we do that though we should look at tournament results so you can sort of understand where i'm coming from let's start off with the san diego regionals so the san diego regionals were won by jisok lee with a garganical team now, Garganical is one of the most important Pokemon in the metagame right now. We can see that it is running a very terrifying combination of Leftovers, Salt Cure, Protect, Wide Guard, and Recover. That means that Salt Cure, a move that does one eighth of your health per turn, if I had a nickel for every time Game Freak added a rock type that had a broken move that dealt damage over time, I'd have two nickels, but you know, it's weird that it happened twice. This move is really strong because not only does it allow for Garganical to apply the status effect on you and then just wait you out with Protect, Fake Out Cycling, Intimidate Cycling, sort of like a pseudo Parish Trap, but it's just damage over time. But it also allows it to deal more damage to the things that would usually switch in on a rock move like Water Types and Steel Types. They only last on the field for four turns, thus making it ideal in this format for water and steel types to have an odd HP number because that'll mean it rounds down and then you end up with one extra turn. That's just a little nuance I heard about it uh, or that I figured out by just numbers. So yeah, uh, Garganical is one of the most important metagame Pokemon right now and that is even in Series 2 that's true because we're already sort of moving forward as a community with Series 2 since most of the events going forward are going to be that. So we see that Garganical got first and second place in this uh, recent tournament. It even got ninth place. It's all over the place. I got 15th. What's up? Okay, so Garganical, its move is actually not, uh, it's it's not like a guaranteed effect by the game's code. It is a secondary effect. Salt Cure will deal damage as its main effect, but the Covert Cloak will actually make you immune to the after uh, to the after effects damage of Salt Cure, which is really useful in the Garganical matchup because that means that the uh, Covert Cloak Pokemon will actually just be taking 40 base power moves from a Pokemon that doesn't invest into attack. Garganical basically is unable to deal with that Pokemon. So the Covert Cloak finds a use on these Pokemon, specifically to beat Garganical. 
And if you wanna make your Garganical matchup even better, you're already running Recover. So at the expense of having Leftovers Recover, you can actually just run a Covert Cloak on your Garganical and guarantee you win the 1v1, which is really cool. So yeah, that is very awesome. But what other Pokemon can use Covert Cloak? I have four Pokemon here that I think are actually very decent Covert Cloak users. And keep in mind that the community sort of thought that Covert Cloak and Open Team Sheet would be very bad. But here's the thing. Covert Cloak isn't just a best of one, oh, I'm immune to intimidate, or not intimidate, uh, to fake out an icy wind and stuff, and you didn't know that, so now you're going to lose. Uh, it's actually much more than that. It is a preventative measure. In the same way that Clear Amulet, there's someone just speeding outside my house, if you could hear the car. If someone's running like Clear Amulet, they're using that as a preventative measure. They don't want to get intimidated. They don't want to get icy wind dropped. It is not there just in case. It's there because it is just very good. Covert Cloak can work in the very same way because not only are you going to be immune to the fake out, meaning that if you lead off with an inner focus Pokemon plus like a Covert Cloak Pokemon, you basically have a guaranteed free turn where you, there's nothing they can do to stop you, but it'll also allow it to get off moves much more reliably. So Rotom Wash uh, can actually run Will-O-Wisp to help deal with another top tier right now, which is going to be, where'd it go? Iron Hands. I made a whole video about Iron Hands the other day if you want to check it out. But effectively, Iron Hands is a very good Pokemon on lead next to a variety of other things. But Iron Hands is extremely weak to Intimidate and Burn. Effectively, if you get a Burn and an Intimidate on an Iron Hands, they will be doing no damage to you, which is why I think Covert Cloak Arcanine is actually a really solid play right now. So, with Rotom, not only are you able to basically 1v1 a Garganical because you're not really taking any damage from them and two Hydro Pumps will do it, or a few Thunderbolts if you want to play it safe, but uh, it'll also be able to on lead just see an Iron Hands, say, Robot Spotted and burn it. That is super, super good for Rotom right now. So yeah, I think Rotom is a very nice user. This Also, you just have, like, guaranteed Volt Switch if you really want to do that. That's a thing that you can do. But you would obviously, if you want to run Covert Cloak, I don't recommend Nasty Plot. I think, because Nasty Plot wants to run Citrus Berry, you pretty much need to run, like, an offensive moveset with just Will-O-Wisp on it. Another user is going to be Garchomp. I think Garchomp is actually one of the better Covert Cloak users, because while it is going to be Intimidate Week, it is going to have that benefit of not having to worry about Icy Wind speed drops after it Terra Grounds. Obviously, Icy Wind will be like a two-shot on it if it stayed Dragon Ground. But yeah, you don't have to worry about Icy Wind speed drops. Fake Out on lead, you're actually able to pretty much guarantee a Sword Dance if you lead off next to like an Amoongus or any kind of redirection Pokemon. You can Rage Powder Swords Dance up and there's nothing they can do to stop that. Versus Garganical, you can set up in its face and there's literally nothing you can do to stop it. You resist its moves and then you just go for the the Terra Ground Earthquake. Or if you think they're going to wide guard, if you scout for that, you can just go for Dragon Claws. After a couple of Swords Dances, Dragon Claws perfectly fine. I would actually even consider maybe dropping this for, excuse me, my computer's yelling at me because it's time to go to bed. I would consider recommending dropping this. <laughs> I would recommend considering dropping this for Iron Head and maybe going for Terra Steel because that'll also help you out in the Fluttermane matchup. So yeah. Another Pokemon I think we should all look into is Covert Cloak Amoongus, because Covert Cloak Amoongus allows you to reliably get redirection on lead. There are a lot of leads where Amoongus will lead off next to like a Trick Room Setter. You go for Rage Powder, you go for Trick Room. Granted, the opponent can fake out the Trick Room Setter. Sometimes they know for a fact that the Trick Room Setter has inner focus. Take Oranguru, for example. So redirection plus Oranguru is a very easy way to get off Trick Room. Amoongus with Covert Cloak will be able to avoid this being an issue because it will always be able to Rage Powder away the powerful hit that is intended for the Trick Room Setter that is immune to in, to flinches some way. I guess actually a more applicable one would be, what's it called, Ferrigarath? Because Ferrigarath is actually uh, immune to flinches entirely because of, or not flinches, uh, it's immune to, um, no, that isn't the right example, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oranguru, that's what I was thinking of, because it has Inner Focus, right? So Inner Focus Oranguru is never going to be faked out, so they'll tend to fake out the Amoongus next to it, and then go for the one-shot, or like a helping-handed one-shot into the Oranguru to prevent Trick Room. Amoongus being able to redirect away that hit, and not have to worry about like getting flinched in the fake out and not being able to go for a Spore or Rage Powder turn one is super good. Also, just leading off Amoongus and not having to worry about fake out at all to Spore something is just a very nice thing to have. Also, Amoongus is a slow Pokemon, so there are going to be a lot of situations where you're going to be facing down a Rock Slide Pokemon, an Iron Head Pokemon, and they're going to be fishing for flinches versus Amoongus. Having that peace of mind is very nice, and while a lot of Amoongus would prefer to have a Rocky Helmet, and I do think that is still the best item, uh, or a Citrus Berry, 
Uh, I think that uh, Covert Cloak does have a place on Amoongus Reds. Finally, Arcanine. I already talked about this one, but Arcanine being able to reliably Will-O-Wisp and Snarl on lead is super, super good. If we look at tournament results, like I said, Iron Hands is top tier, but also Golden Go. If you lead off versus like Iron Hands Golden Go, your Arcanine is just doing phenomenally because a lot of times they'll want to go for like Fake Out into Nasty Plot plus make it rain. Being able to just toss off a Will-O-Wisp or a Snarl or whatever you please is super, super good. Also, versus just other Disruptor Pokemon, I guess an example of this would be, not Disruptor Pokemon, but like versus uh, Tyranitar, if, or Tyranitar plus um, Sand Rush Pokemon like Lycanroc, they tend to want to go for Rock Slides onto you, and at minus one, they're not going to KO you because you have the Intimidate on you. At minus one, they're never going to KO you with a Rock Slide without a crit. So being able to know that you're never going to get that, uh, that cr not the crit, the flinch on you, uh, makes it much easier to go for those will o -Wisp plays. But yeah, I think the main use of Arcanine will just be like on those fake out leads, getting the burns on the big Pokemon. Like versus this team, a burn versus a King Gambit would be huge. A burn versus the Miascarada is huge. There's a lot of uses for this Pokemon. But I do think that the biggest use case will just be versus Garganical because I think that with these two tournament results, the two biggest tournaments in recent memory being won by Garganical and Iron Hands being, you know, higher and higher in usage nowadays, uh, means that I think Covert Cloak will have a place in the metagame even on open team sheets. So yeah, uh, that's gonna be my video for today. I made it a point today. Today's goal was to say um as little as possible because it is a thing that I, it's a crutch that I have with my speech where when I'm talking about something on YouTube, I'll be like, and, uh, 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 and I'm trying to just force myself to pause rather than say, uh, so let me know if I did a good job today. I know I, I know I let a few slip, but if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, check out the Patreon, the uh, YouTube membership, and the Twitch subscriber thing if you want bonus content at the top of each week on Sunday. It's a team building video. So yeah, have a nice one. Bye, guys.